In every KMS cast episode, I like to at least kind of focus for a little bit, for a segment, um, on a programming language or a framework, a uh, library, something like that. So yeah, just wanted to hear about, you know, kind of the pros and cons uh, that you've kind of run into about um, using TypeScript in, in, uh, in this internals environment. I think along with documentation and tasks, TypeScript also helps a lot to know what your code is doing because you know like what's going to be the input and going to be the output. And in the end, everything is just like, you get something, just form this value and I'll put something. I think TypeScript helps a lot with this and I don't see any counters. <laughs> Maybe the only thing is just like the onboarding, but I don't think the learning curve is too high. You can get easily like the basic of types, really easy. Mainly if you come like from static type and language like Java or C Sharp, and it's like pretty similar to C Sharp. The, the creator of TypeScript and C Sharp are the same, so it's basically like copy and paste. Another thing that's cool to mention is that TypeScript is story complete. So that means that you can create a TypeScript inside the TypeScript and you can do like anything there. We're exploring the concept of a dream within a dream. I have a friend that like even did like a, a calculator, like that it is sums and multiplication all with types. And this is like really crazy. You can do like everything with types. I totally agree with that. Also, we have like a rich uh, ID support, so it's kind of even more easier now dealing with all that because I think he you know, is even like kind of compiling and create some linting tools so we are able to have like all the things on the fly so it's much more easy to catch bugs on those sides like it's much more uh, readable it's kind of in the beginning it could be a little scary because like it's a, a kind of a, a new language going on but when you get used to it it's really worth and I kind of agree with Nicholas right now I don't see too much calls um, because things are getting better, even like for the JSX support, like they are improving that, they are kind of decoupling, decoupling a little bit of the, the types, so it's becoming easier to deal with, so yeah. Something that I forgot to mention is we have like a code chain integration between our backend and frontend, so all of requests of our backend has the, a schema as input and uh, another schema as output, so on the front end, we put this um, from the API and generate types for us. So when you like call an endpoint on the front end, we get the types. This is like actually really um, good because, you know, everyone has faced a, a issue that the backend has changed something and the need is that it isn't there anymore, but this solves it. It's just like, like GraphQL solves it, so it's pretty good. Every time the schema changed, everyone tried to find where the issue was. Where is it? Well, related TypeScript, I believe that um, it brings some something very good. This uh, that is the uh, OOP uh, practice, like in JavaScript. JavaScript, I believe that uh, is more functional programming. Uh, so when you bring TypeScript, you start to work with OOP, and this is cool because many people uh, that was working with like as mentioned, C Sharp or Java can keep the concepts like using the same concepts, but a little bit of difference between the, the syntax, but you can keep the same concepts like you bring from the other technology to apply on this. And you can keep your code organized and consistent. If you try to change some, something that is implementing some interface, you should follow that interface. It's not the exact same uh, interface as Java implements, but uh, you can use this in the same way. So that, that is, yeah. the, for me, it's the best pro uh, when you work with TypeScript. That's actually kind of a good segue sort of to expand on something I know we wanted to talk about, which is, you know, just keeping code bases up to date. Um, obviously, everyone here knows JavaScript um, and things like that, even, even something like PHP or whatever, you know, they can exist for quite some time. But, you know, there are things that have to be updated along the way. Um, so that sounds like having, you know, uh, strict typing and, and OOP practices probably helps keep a, a code base pretty clean, especially, which some folks might not know if they're not super familiar with internal teams or even X team in, in general, you know, you, ha you often will have folks that might just be working on internals for a little bit of time, and then they start working with another partner. So 
things have to be a clear path um, for folks to, you know, experienced programmers still, but to, to just jump in and kind of understand things right away. So yeah, I wanted to know just kind of how you do sort of keep things up to date, uh, make sure that the code base doesn't get too crazy as, as like I said, you know, we are having other developers jump in and try to keep that learning curve uh, pretty low. So just wanted to hear you talk about that a little bit, if you could. Yeah, I think in our side, the way how we have our onboard process, I found it like really awesome to deal with because we are able to look through all the readme files and we have like a, a huge readme files with like a lot of tips and even like explaining pitfalls we could be having. So right now we kind of have that process. So if you are able to contribute in something on the readme file, like do it. And then we will probably start it by small tasks just to get used to the code base and like look through everything. And then you get like playing a little crazy <laughs> and try to understand like everything we are doing. But I think be able to have even like uh, linking with TypeScript again, we are able to have the code more readable and even all the tests we have for all the functionalities, even like we I think those things have a lot for us to be able to track everything and kind of have like a documentation going on because we have something, we are expecting some behaviors and for some reason, if you change something and you create some side effects, we will be able to track that. So I think it's mainly that of my first contact. So yeah, I think, I think it's mainly that. We have this kind of uh, new onboard. Uh, I this is my second time on uh, internal. So to have uh, at first time I come to the internals, uh, it was totally different. You just start to, the, to work on some task and that's it, you go through. But this has been changed recently. So people start to work like you have an, an, an onboarding ticket. So there is some tasks and one of them is to get familiar to the code base start to fix some tests, start to work in a simple task that is assigned to you when you join. So this is something that helps people that come to the project to understand how things work. And even when people work with legacy code, like the, the, the project, uh, our project is um, a little bit old. So when people come to the project, they, they start to learn about the code uh, during the tasks. like. Uh, every task has uh, some history in the ticket, some some commit that has the ticket uh, link, so you can see what uh, was done to that ticket. So this is awesome when you join the project because you can see the like the, the breadcrumb, so you you can follow this and you can understand the legacy code, not just understand the new code, but what was the the changes until this moment. So this is great to. A new teammate. When you join, you need to do like an actual like feature ticket or bug, but you must need to do like a test improvement ticket. And I think this is really good because testing can be a lot of difference in, in like different projects. People like most prefer integration or unit, and you need like to see what test people is doing. And the other thing cool about tests is you need to do what you are testing. So this forces you to understand more about the code base. I remember like that task was really helpful for me to understand more about like what the XAQ does. So yeah, 